Broadway's My Beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Flow of an August nighttime, drift and ebb of an August nighttime through the narrow channels of Broadway. And where surge was, the great pools of silence filling now. And stand at their edge and try for a tear to mourn the passing of summer night. And flip the coin for the memory that's worth the weeping. There was the beach at Far Rockaway and a dune from which to observe a girl dancing alone, arms stretched to the sea and to the moon. Ritual dance to the tune of the faraway portable radio and the plastic ukulele. And there was the moment you approached her, touched her shoulder, and on the face turned to you were tears from closed eyes. So hit the subway and back to the street and flip the coin again. There must be another thing to remember. And this, too, on the trailing edge of night. A room deep somewhere in a brownstone tenement and a youth in his silence and a woman, dead of a bullet wound, sprawled across kitchen linoleum. And Detective Mugovan trying to find a gentle way with a boy's silence. You want to tell us about it, son? Look, son, no one wants to hurt you. No one... You try, huh, Danny? Why don't you move away from that corner, son? Come over here. Sit down. You live here? Uh, Yes, sir. And this woman... My mother. Can you tell us what happened? My mother. Look, what's your name, son? Jimmy. Jimmy Bruce. That's my mother. Look... What? Why don't you go away, you and this other man? We don't need you. Mom and me don't... Look, kid. There's no other way to say it. Someone killed your mother. All we're asking of you is to help us. Were you here when it happened? Was there anyone else here? Was... You don't have to stare at me like that, kid. What do you do now, Danny? Get it, huh, Margaret? Yeah. What do you want, lady? Policeman downstairs. He said to come up here. He said to tell you... This lady, Danny, a policeman downstairs said for her to come up here. He said for her to tell us. Well, let her come in. What do you have to tell us? A boy. Just a boy. Why is he staring that way? His mother was just shot dead. That's why he's staring, lady. And that's his mother there. He's staring at his mother. There's something you want to tell us. Poor boy. Poor, poor boy. Just tell us why the policeman downstairs let you come up here, lady. Well, he said you'd want to know. Want to know what? I live a few doors down, just next to the corner. Well, I couldn't sleep, and I was just looking out the window, I guess, just lying in bed, not being able to sleep. And I got up and walked around, and through the window, in the alley, I saw... Saw what? Well, it was a man running, running very fast. He was running from this direction, from this end of the block? Yes, I think he was. He was running, and then he hid behind a trash can, and I watched him crouch there. Then you must have got a good look at him. Well, it was dark, and I I couldn't tell much about him. A big man, a little man, light, dark, fair. Well, you said you stood there and watched him, lady. You must have seen. He was just a man running and hiding from something, and I watched him. I don't know why you think I should have done anything else. Well, there's been a lot of commotion in the neighborhood, lady. A murder. How come it took you this long to tell us? I told you. He was a man who was running away from something and hiding. I couldn't sleep, and I didn't feel I had the right to... Well, anyhow, he went away. I just heard a few minutes ago there was a murder down the block. So I threw this coat on over my... Well, anyway... What's your name? Charlotte. Miss Charlotte Lane. I live at 3456 West 18th, just down the block. And, well, anything I can do to help you just... Oh, you poor boy. Just a boy. And your mother dead like that. That awful way. <laughs> oh, don't do that, child. Don't. Then Miss Lane does a thing. She moves quietly over to the boy, lifts her hand to him gently, touches cheek and hair, and waits for the length of time women know it takes for compassion to be transferred. Then the onrushing sound to post proof that violence has been done. Nighttime tableau on the edge of the city that suddenly belongs to the police. Leave it outside in the deep night street and home. And pull down the bed from the wall. 
close your eyes and search for a dream behind a wall of hot August hours. Finally, sleep and not dream until the seconds before it's time to get up again. It's morning, and it's a new day. Call headquarters and check in, then ride downtown again. And the house on West 18th, the walk upstairs, and last night's doorway this morning with a policeman in front of it, who tells you the boy's just sitting there looking out of the window, who opens the door for you. Hello, Jimmy. Jimmy? I just... You're from last night, aren't you? That's right. My name's Danny Clover. How do I look? Jimmy, uh... My tie straight? Hair combed? One button off the coat here. But on a blue surge, it's tough to see. Listen, Jimmy... I figure looking nice for the funerals. The least I can do at such a time. Don't you think so? So all the people who come to look can say that's Jimmy Bruce. He's a regular little man. Cut it out. Okay. I'm okay. Who killed your mother? How am I supposed to know that? You weren't in any kind of condition to talk last night, Jimmy, so now you can tell me what happened. I came home, and there she was, lying on the floor, shot. That's all. You came home. Where were you? Outside, streets, park. Where boys my age are supposed to be at night in the summer. And the kind of they're growing and restless. Now what? How about your mother? Was she, uh... Don't make me get sloppy. I told you I was a boy growing up. I can't say wonderful, and I loved her, and I'll miss her, and... Just don't make me do it. Where's your father, Jimmy? He didn't do it. I didn't say he did. I just asked you where he was. He doesn't live here. They were divorced five years ago. I'll want to talk to him. His name's Harry March. My mother took her own name when they divorced. I did, too. Harry March, Mr. Clover. In the phone book. Someplace on 22nd Street. Okay. You want to know about Nick, too? Yeah. Yeah, I bet you will. You want to know about old Nick, won't you? Who's he, Jimmy? You can never tell about people, can you? You people in the police must see a lot of that, don't you? A guy you would never suspect. All of a sudden, he's a... Come on, Jimmy. Tell me what you're talking about. Nick. Nick Silvern. 1212 East 8th Street. Mention my mother's name to him. See what he says. Mr. Clover? Uh Uh-huh. You police people must really see light of that, don't you? Guy you would never suspect. All of a sudden, he's a killer. The adolescent smile, then, and the wink. Wisdom at 17 with regards to murder. Leave and ride the streets again. East 8th, the Nick Silvern is not home, and no one seems to know when he will be nor where he could be. Get a description from neighbors and call it in as an all-points bulletin. Then the special businessman's lunch, which consisted of warm, small portions with iced tea and no dessert. Phone booth and look up a number for Harry March. And Mr. March is not home either, you're told by the super. Did you try his place of business? Well, try there. Utility repair shop over on 3rd, the super thinks. About the 500 block someplace, he thinks. So go there and walk the 500 block and try a store whose window has only two electric home mixers in it, both broken. Within a second. <laughs> Bet you never saw one like this before, huh? What? Come here. Ever see a golf ball in an electric toaster? <laughs> Look underneath here in the mechanism. Mrs. Stutman wonders why she can't make toast in the morning for Mr. Stutman. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> Are you uh, Harry March? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I am. I'm Danny Clover. What's wrong that you need fixed in a hurry by Harry? I'm from the police, Mr. March. Well, I'm still Harry. I'll still fix it in a hurry. <laughs> Pass that. Did you hear about your wife? That's the wrong Harry, Danny. I don't have one. I did. I split up, divorced. About five years ago, her name was Hilda Bruce, right? You mean Hilda? What's wrong with Hilda that I should have heard about? She was murdered. I'm sorry to hear that. You kill her? No, I did not. When's the last time you saw her, Harry? Last week. Hey, look, I got better sense than not to level with you. I... So I held the last week, but a lot of times before that. Tell me about it. Well, I don't own this place. I get sent out on calls to clients who need things fixed, you know, like defroster busted on a refrigerator, a golf ball. Now go on. It... About six months ago, coincidence, I get sent out for a busted defroster to my old wife, Hilda's. She looked a lot better than five years ago. When we left each other and she moved away, I didn't know where. So you kept coming back? Yeah. Yeah, I I romanced her, Danny. Still in love with her, huh? It felt good being with her. But like that, you know, love is for 18 to 25 age bracket. 
Now, about your son, Jimmy. Nice seeing him, too. When I saw him the first time six months ago, I missed him real bad for the years I hadn't seen him. Hilda. Last week, Hilda told me not to come back anymore. She shoved the gun at me, and she said that. She had another guy, Nick. She had him, and he didn't drink, and she didn't want me. I've got to take you along, Harry. Yeah, sure, let's go. Anything you say. Harry, get out. My day belongs to you, Danny, so anything you say. Come on. Up here. Show me any spot on this building where it says police department. Not even in chalk does it say police department. Did you notice that too, Danny? There's a woman who told us she lived here. I want her to have a look at you. <laughs> My day belongs to you, Danny. Anything you want to do with it. That list of tenants on the wall. Do, do I get a fielder's choice, or is there a particular lady we have in mind? Yeah, this one. Charlotte Lane, apartment 1C. Charlotte? Sounds fair. Let's go. Yeah. Miss Lane told us she saw a man running down the alley, hiding behind a trash can just after your wife was murdered. Former wife. A former wife, who lives up the street who you were romancing. Yeah, I sure was, Danny, and then suddenly she wouldn't have any part, like I said. So this Charlotte Lane saw a fellow running and hiding, huh? She know what he looked like? She could identify him? Let's ask her. Anything you say. Hey, Charlotte, open it so long with a friend. Shut up. <laughs> Miss Lane? Oh, we've gone this far, Danny, so when it... Hey, Miss Lane, man, he wants you to take a look at me. He says that he... he... Danny. You see what I see, Danny? That lady, the way she stretched across her bed with her eyes open like that? That's not from sleep, huh, Danny? That lady... She's dead, ain't she, Danny? Strangled. This Miss Charlotte Lane? That's right. He said the day belonged to you, Danny. <laughs> and Charlotte here, she just went and lost it up for you. <laughs> Didn't she, Danny? <laughs> Didn't she, Danny? Listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Wherever polio menaces a single child, blood is needed. The gamma globulin in blood can blunt the effects of the disease. Wherever disaster of any kind strikes, blood must be rushed to save lives. The Red Cross warns us that blood donations have fallen off alarmingly, as they tend to whenever the weather calls us away in large numbers. The National Blood Program is vital to us all. Call your local chapter and make an appointment to give a pint of blood. Don't let disaster catch American napping. The August evening leans close to Broadway, whispers promises into its ear. There, in the dark, beyond the whirling lights, the lacy dream. And there, on the edge of laughter, the face that darts behind the smoky warmth and disappears... Across the street now, in the fast, hard clack of a woman's heels, the turn a corner and she's gone, too, back again into the darkness. And somehow, that's the way it is. All the promises, just a smile away. Always across the street and around the corner. Run after them, because when August is done, another year starts dying. At evening at headquarters... Danny? Come on in, Mugwin. You got something? A few things. Danny? Yeah? What? You miss Tartaglia? I really do, Mugovan. I got a card from him. Uh, Dear Officer Mugovan, having a fine time. Wish you were. He meant wish you were here. Couldn't get it all in the card. He wrote smaller on mine. He got it all in. Hey, what's Gino doing in Baltimore with his cousin Kendall, Danny? I thought he didn't like his cousin Kendall. His wife likes his cousin Kendall. Well, she doesn't like Baltimore, though. 
What have you got for me, Mugovan? Well, a little check and back, Danny. May or may not be of any use. Give me the opportunity of deciding, if you don't mind. You really miss him, huh? Me too. Let's get with it, huh, Mugovan? Okay, okay. Uh, Jimmy Bruce, son of the deceased, told the Bruce one month ago on July 12th, uh, lodged a complaint against his father, Harry March. Oh? I say lodged a complaint. He walked into the precinct and told the death sergeant to keep his father away from his mother. The sergeant told him to call if his father showed up, you know. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, on uh, Charlotte Lane, neighbor, no police record, nothing. Except worked as a waitress. Weber Health Ateria. Health Ateria? Where? In the village. Uh, here, I dug up the address. You know something? What? There are four Weber's Health Ateriers in New York. I'm very happy. Uh, you don't understand. I had to find out which one Charlotte Lane... She works at the one in the village, Danny. Good night, Danny. Ride now to the village. And park the car and walk. And the exotic things of the village. The August things. Man on camp stool at street corner. Manicure scissors poised gracefully. Snipping delicately, swiftly out of black paper. The silhouette image of a woman's profile. And in black silhouette, the woman's profile has youth in it. Which pleases her. Which makes her to remark to her companion who wears a fez that she is very happy, Stanley. Which makes the fezed man dig for a buck, which is the stated price on the cardboard at the artist's feet. August things in exotic village. Girl with carefully designed shock of gray and black hair, sauntering, sandaled, and in sari, splotched with guilt. Briefcase under arm. A youth, forehead against plate glass, sipping in the mysteries of the shop's display. Driftwood planted in fragment of concrete building block. Necklace of rusty nails. And farther on, Mrs. Webster's health Ateria, which has also a display in its window. Naked pile of wheat germ on one arm of scale, balanced on other arm of scale by a scoop of simulated mashed potatoes. And beneath, the legend, your health, whither? And crystal jar filled to brimming with soybean. And box of candy with the sugar, sugar substitutes carefully analyzed for the chemists inhabiting the village. And inside, a counter laden with healthy stuffs, almond meatloaf, 35 cents, soybean parfait, 12 cents, and at the cash register... Indulge yourself, young man. A woman in sleeveless cotton print and of muscular bulge in the forearm. Gray hair coiled high and speared with prong of tortoiseshell comb. Eat, young man, and if your eyes are bigger than your stomach, don't worry about it. Not here. Not at Mrs. Weber. I'm from the police, Mrs. Weber. When you eat my cuisine, you'll have a whole new outlook. Feel better, too. Uh, try the parfait. Take my word for it. You I'm from always... the police, Mrs. Weber, to check on a woman you had working for you. Charlotte. That's right, Charlotte Lane. She was... Choked until dead. That's what she was. I read in the papers that's what she was. Any other season, I'd close the health interior and go someplace and cry. But, oh, some of you'd be surprised. Oh, just uh, tell me about her, Mrs. Weber. Whom she knew, uh, who she... A girl of very sweet heart. That was Charlotte. Kind, sweet to the crackpots who wander in here and make remarks. Never face Charlotte. She has a good word for anyone, even meat eaters. They finally ate out of her hand. Just uh, nice to customers, huh? No special friends, no... Uh... I was a special friend. I paid her good. No, besides you. Besides uh... me? A drunk. What? A drunk who blew in here one day to fix my vegetable juicer. Went patooey on the molasses and germ casserole. Started breaking things. Who was he? Uh... A drunk. And Charlotte was sweet to him. I yelled for the cop on the beat. By the time the cop arrived, the drunk was eating out of Charlotte's hand. You said he was a special friend of Charlotte's. Mm -hmm. He got that way after that. Used to come in all the time, said my stuff was good for hangovers. It was Charlotte he come for, though, not the mint tea. Well, then you must have got acquainted. Charlotte must have introduced you. Sure she did. I asked her who her drunken sot was. She said, that's Harry, Harry March. And I'm going to have him soon as he gets rid of some notions about a wife he once had. I'll have him, Mrs. Weber, Charlotte said. No one else, Mrs. Weber, Charlotte said. Uh, that was her heart. Real sweet. Oh, so home to dull novel and sleep. And new morning. And to headquarters and sit with the fact that Harry March was an old friend of Charlotte's. And be interrupted. Nick Silvern, wanted in connection with murder of Hilda Bruce, was picked up and held at 12th Precinct. So, go there. Hello, Nick. You bring a whip or something? Got it out. Well, this is my first time in. Whatever I say, it's on account of that. So, if I ask that you bring the thumbscrew, you just realize I'm a new boy at this sort of thing. What made it so tough to find you, Nick? Why should I be looked for? Come on, come on. No, Nick. why should I? When did you find out Hilda Bruce had been murdered? 
yesterday morning, late. From the papers? That's right. And all the late editions carried your name that we were looking for you? And I asked myself why I should be looked for, like I'm asking myself now and getting no answer. But you ran. Oh, now listen, mister, I'm no competition for anything like murders or police departments. You know what a schnook is? Someone says that word around you. He means a guy like me. Harmless. Most what I want is please don't bother me. Leave me alone. Because what have I possibly got that you could possibly want? Who killed her? I don't know. You see what I mean? How about her neighbor, Miss Lane? Who killed her? I don't know. Guy like me, how could I know? Nick, I understand Hilda was in love with you. I'm honored, but no killer. Where were you the night before last? Oh, Nick. (laughs) It so happens... uh, There's a young lady in my neighborhood... She's fond of me. She's your alibi, huh? Well, she's gone to summer school. I I happen to be very good in algebra. She's making up in algebra. Look, you got to drag her in. Listen, a guy like me... Her name is Toba Ramson. She lives up on Tremont. Another reason why you ran, Nick. I have told you everything I know. Hang me, shoot me, feed me to the gorillas. I have told you everything I know. Danny? Mm-hmm? It's me, Danny, Detective Muggerman. So turn around and take a look at me, huh? Sure. Uh, you look hot, Muggerman. I walk to the neighborhoods, I get hot. Sweat through my coat, wilt my collar. It's a quirk with me. Why take off your coat? It's allowed, huh? What's eating you? Lay off. I just lay off. All right. Just the heat, that's all. Yeah. The heat. Let's have a fan, huh? <sighs> that's better. Better. You check Silverman's alibi? One of the things I check, yeah. Silverman's got an alibi. 17 years old, haircut that new way the kids wear, and very backward at algebra. Night Hilda Bruce was murdered, Nick brought a pony up to Toba Remsen's algebra pony. It had all the answers. How about the time of Charlotte Lane's murder? Nick brought his pony again. Uh, Silverman's out then. Danny? Mm hmm. Earlier today, I got the report from ballistics. Hilda Bruce was killed with a 32. I checked that too while I was out. Hardware stores, sporting goods stores, places where if you want 32 caliber bullets, you go buy them. Go on. A week ago, hardware store on West 19th, a package of bullets was bought. 32s. By a young man, the owner said. You know who it was? Sure he knew. He said the kid was practically a neighbor. Came in all the time for things. Kid named Jimmy Bruce. It's a heat, huh, Danny? Heat that makes me feel sick to my stomach. That's what it is, huh, Danny? In here, Jimmy. You can sit down if you want to. What do you call this place? That's just a room at headquarters, Jimmy. We'll have your father in here in a minute. Okay, Danny? Bring him in, Muggerman. You think my father's a murderer? You're crazy. He was a good guy. He wouldn't hurt anybody. All he was trying to do... Hi, Pa. What'd you bring him here for? What's the matter? Aren't you glad to see your son? Hey, Jimmy. What? I've been talking to you, Jimmy. He asked me who killed her. I told him. I told him I didn't know. That's all he told us, Harry. Because it's the truth. Jimmy, after your mother and father separated, how often did you see your father? Lots of times. Now, don't lie, Jimmy. I didn't know where you were. Well, after you found out where we were, lots of times. That's what you meant, wasn't it? Yeah, Pa. Yeah. Did you ever see your dad when he was drunk? Why don't you leave him alone? Yeah, I've seen my dad when he was drunk. How does he stack up with the drunks you've seen in the park, son? He doesn't get that sloppy. Harry? I heard him. He said I didn't get that sloppy. But drunk. Is that why your ex-wife told you not to come around? I told you that. The other reason was a man named Nick Silvern. He told you that too, Danny. Sure I did. Sure. One thing slipped your mind, though, Harry. Charlotte Lane. What about her? You'd known her a long time. I stopped knowing her for a long time, too. How long ago? About six months? When you met your ex-wife again? How about that, Danny? Running around with a woman right down the street from the woman he used to be married to and not even know it. What do they call that? Uh, Fate? Kismet? What? You killed Charlotte, Harry? You killed Hilda? One or both, Harry. Or neither. What do you know about it, Jimmy? Nothing. Pa? Leave him alone. We think you killed Charlotte, Harry. Think anything you want. She saw you running away. She heard a murder had been committed. She came to us... And told us she saw a man running away. Didn't mention your name. That was nice of her. Didn't mention your name, not the first time. She was going to hold it over you, Harry. 
She came to us to let you know what she could do to you unless you'd take her back, so you killed her. You gotta have my son sit through this. The poor little tyke went out and bought some bullets a few weeks ago, Harry. The poor, innocent boy bought a pack of 32 soft-nosed slugs. What'd you do that for, Jimmy? To keep your father away. Pa. What? These guys are smart cookies. Just don't... Don't co- what, Pa? Like I said, these guys are smart. So figure you killed Charlotte. That means, Harry, you were running away from the death of your wife. And we all know your wife didn't want you around and Jimmy didn't want you around. We know about the 12th Precinct, Jimmy, how you asked the sergeant to keep your father away. We know you bought bullets, and we know your mother had a gun. You told us that, Harry. Remember remember, you said your wife poked a gun at you? So what happened the night your wife was killed? I shot her. Cut it out, Pa. I shot her. You're crazy, Pa? You're going crazy? Get out of here, Jimmy. Listen, Pa was drunk. That's no excuse. Pa was drunk. Mom pulled a gun at him. Pa took it away from her. He was drunk. He had a loaded gun, and he was drunk. So I went after him. Why not? He was drunk. The gun went off. That's all. The gun went off. Accidentally. And my mother was dead. The nighttime blares down Broadway, and the street gathers it up like a passion. And threaded against the dark, the million fragments, neon and roar and melting shapes and shock and clots of crowd. It's a fury that sweeps you up and holds you close and throws you into the gutter of your choice. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugafin. The program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Sheldon Leonard was heard as Harry March and George Peroni as Jimmy Bruce. Featured in the cast were Truda Marson, Martha Wentworth, and Lawrence Dobkin. Bill Anders speaking. Every Sunday night, a two-fisted He-Man takes you down a dangerous studded road to mystery adventure on CBS Radio. Meet Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective, Sunday evening on most of these same stations. You'll thrill every minute as action-loving Diamond comes to grips with criminals and killers, cutting through subterfuge, putting his neck in a gangland noose in interest of justice. Richard Diamond, Sunday evening on CBS Radio. Don't miss him. And remember, for thrilling dramas of escape, listen Sunday nights to the CBS Radio Network.